The first website I ever designed and got paid for, I made for $500. The $500 worked out to be like just underneath minimum wage at the time. But fast forward five years, I just finished a freelance web design project for $7,500. And honestly, looking back, I'm pretty mind blown at my journey. I really never thought I'd be where I am today in my career. And I just wanted to make this video to share how over the past five years, I have gotten to the point where I'm at right now where I'm charging 15 times more than when I first started. So in the beginning years, I pretty much only used Squarespace to design all the websites I worked on for clients, my portfolio, my church, everything. I learned about it through all the YouTubers that were getting sponsored by Squarespace at the time. And it was really user-friendly, like unprecedented level of user-friendliness. The templates looked really good and there really wasn't a better no-code alternative. And here are some of the websites I built using Squarespace back in the day. Here's my portfolio using just a simple portfolio template, a simple church website, a record label site, a physical therapist, and a website for my brother who's a photographer. All of these I made for under $1,000 or for free. And it was pretty easy for me to sell at this price because it was really easy for clients to update the content on their own using Squarespace. They were usually willing to pay more if they were coming from something like WordPress or Wix. So even though it wasn't that much money, I was honestly like so excited. I never studied design, I'm self-taught. I never thought that I would ever even be able to be like a professional web designer. But here I was designing websites, people liked them. That was a huge win for me personally. But pretty quickly, I ran into some obstacles. As I started designing more websites, I started running into two main challenges. First, I felt an upper ceiling for how much I could charge for templated sites. Because I was using Squarespace, I could only offer limited design customization, like colors, fonts, logos, and a little bit with layout, but not to the level of detail that I now know high ticket clients expect. So I had trouble breaking through the $5,000 ceiling for web design. And I tried a lot of things. I tried beefing up my portfolio, all kinds of sales tactics, content marketing, and all these things eventually got me more leads, but I wasn't able to close them. And looking back now, I think it really boiled down to the fact that Squarespace become the DIY option instead of the design first option. Because clients would literally say to me on sales calls, I have a website right now, but I just made it in Squarespace. I'm ready for something better. Or I want a fully custom designed website that matches my new branding, not something that's just a, a template. Or because no code tools like Webflow started popping up in 2020, I started getting clients actually asking, do you design in Webflow? All these things just like, contributed to like me not being able to break through this ceiling, this price ceiling. And secondly, I started feeling frustrated with the things I couldn't accomplish in Squarespace without coding. Some examples are, I wanted a filterable portfolio, but no matter what, I couldn't do that natively in Squarespace without coding or buying a third-party plugin. So I just never had a filter in my portfolio. I literally learned everything I know about CSS today just by trying to find workarounds to things that didn't work properly or interactions that didn't work right built natively in Squarespace. For example, a logo not inverting on a dark background versus a light background in Squarespace, I had to like code my way around that. Plus they recently launched a new grid system that did allow for more layout combinations and more customizability, but it was really difficult for me to make a layout that had the exact spacing that I was envisioning in my head, which just got more and more frustrating as I became better and better as a web designer and I wanted to flex those design skills, but I was limited by Squarespace's limiting rigid structure. So what did I do to fix this? Well, during lockdown 2020, I listened to this podcast with Ron Segal and Chris Doe, and Ron was raving about the no-code revolution led by Webflow. He was talking about making like 400K a year as a designer, charging 10 to 20K per website all because of Webflow. Like he was attributing it to Webflow. And he was like, I don't know why more designers aren't doing this. And this was a life-changing, mind-blowing podcast conversation to me. And so, of course, I looked into it. And I found out that Ron puts out this Webflow Masterclass and the 10K Designer course. But since I wasn't making that much money at the time, it was out of my budget. But Black Friday came around, 50% off all the courses. I decided to buy those two courses, the Webflow Masterclass and the 10K Designer. And, you know, work was slow. Life was kind of slow during lockdown. I decided, let me invest in myself. And I got the courses thinking maybe I can use this time to level up as a web designer. So I take the courses and I learn a lot of really good stuff like flex boxes, website strategy, site maps, client management, all the good stuff from these courses. But I only get to like 40% of them before I lose the motivation because I didn't have an actual project to use them on. So at work, we were designing an internal website. I decided, let me pitch Webflow. Let me try to use this and like apply the skills I've learned, and like actually get good at it. So pitched it, company agreed to it. So I really dove into Webflow with this big project. And uh, it was a pretty horrible experience for me. <laughs> 
coming from a templated tool like Squarespace or even Elementor on WordPress, there was a really, really steep learning curve, even with the course to help. And really, even though Webflow was marketed to me as like, this is Photoshop for the web. Like it's like a design interface for designers for you to build a website visually. I quickly found out that to be a great Webflow designer, you have to really think like a developer. You have to manually name and apply classes to every element, which that alone was enough to break my design flow enough and add enough friction to the whole web design process that it just was like so overwhelmingly frustrating. So I ended up pushing through and I made an okay website with Webflow, but I quickly learned that Webflow was not the answer to all the problems that I thought it was gonna be. And maybe no code just isn't for me. So I kept building in Squarespace and I kept charging less than I wanted to. But then unexpectedly, I'm watching an all year video and he starts talking about the new cool kids on the block, Framer, an actual design first, no code web builder that has a lot of templates, but also full design customizability and a super intuitive interface. The websites that I was seeing built on Framer were just like mind blowing to me and like super inspiring. So I got super excited, but I was still working at an agency and we had moved away from web design projects because we could charge more for doing other services. So I didn't really have a real project to apply Framer to. So I just like took mental note of the existence of this new tool and kept the pulse on it through all year's videos and his newsletter until 2025. In August 2024, I give my company 90 days notice that I'm leaving at the end of the year to go full-time freelance. Easily the scariest decision I've ever made in my life. And at that point, I decide I'm going to specialize in branding and web design. So of course, I needed a website to sell my freelance services. So I decided, let me use Framer, this amazing new tool that I've been hearing about to build my portfolio. And it ends up being a dream. Like, Literally everything that I hoped Webflow was when I first tried that. Everything's intuitive. I can figure out most things on my own. And when I can't, the community's super open and supportive and generous. I ended up creating all the core functionality that I missed in my previous Squarespace life on my first version of my portfolio site. With that portfolio filter, fully custom design, and a super cool animated button, I just had a lot of fun with it. But beyond the design customizability, I was facing the fears of going full-time freelance. Honestly, I am a very risk-averse person, so I had to take a really methodical approach to addressing all the things I was afraid of. And there's three main fears that I had. One, not having the self-discipline to work for myself without a manager telling me what to do every day. I just really didn't know if I had the discipline to do it, to be a self-employed person. Second, I didn't know if I could attract enough leads. And third, I didn't know if even if I got those leads, if I could convert them into actual paying clients. So to address number one, I took a two week vacation while I was still at my job, pretended that I was doing this full time. I was a full time freelancer and content creator and pretended like that for two weeks. And I came to life like every single day of those two weeks, I woke up actually excited to get into the work. And I was just like, so inspired, so excited, like really into it. And so I discovered that, okay, I'm not afraid of that anymore. More, I know that I can do it. If I just have the freedom to choose what I work on, I'm going to be into it. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to be diligent. So no more fear of number one. Now for number two, to generate more leads, I pivoted my social media content. So originally I got viral and blew up because I was experimenting with like generative AI tools, but I pivoted away from that and decided to focus on design, just things about creativity that I was super passionate about. And within two to three months of doing that, I was starting to get inquiries really consistently with how frequently I was posting. And it was like so many leads, I couldn't even reply to everything. So because I saw that happen, their correlation between posting and leads, I stopped being afraid of that too. I knew that there was a way for me to get those leads reliably. But number three was really the hardest one to overcome, converting these leads into actual paying clients. So I'd book a ton of sales calls. I'd get the client on the call. We'd have a great conversation. I'd tell them the price. They'd ask me for a proposal and past work. And I would send them that information and then I would get ghosted. Like I just wouldn't hear from them anymore. And so that happened like, honestly, too many times to count. And I thought number one, maybe it's my proposal. Like I'm sending PDFs. People have to like open it on their phone. And then it's like not a great experience. They have to like rotate it because it's like a horizontal slide deck. If it's a PDF, you have to like, kind of like pinch to zoom. It's not like a great experience, right? So I thought like maybe I can make a responsive website proposal using Framer because Framer's CMS capabilities made it really easy for me to just like make all the fields, make the layout once. And then for each sales call, I could just fill in all the information that I need to and then generate a proposal pretty quickly, like within 30 minutes after each call. I decided to do that. And then the second thing I decided to do was 
on calls, I would actually pitch custom design services, like fully custom. Because I knew I could do literally anything with the design and framer, I was having the conversations with the client and telling them, listen, it's not going to be a template. It's not going to look like your competition. We can do whatever you want with the design. That freedom for me to be able to pitch that without worrying whether it was possible or not was so freeing to me, like not having to explain, hey, we actually can't do this. We can't do that. But to explain that it's possible. That made a big difference. And so those two things combined, I think, I got a lot of comments about the proposal being great, like clients being really impressed by that. And secondly, a lot of excitement around a new tool, a new web tool like Framer, like these people, most of these people are like CMOs or communications directors or really nimble creative founders. And all of them had heard of Framer at that point. They were super excited about the idea of using Framer to build websites. So whereas all of my sales calls before, it was maybe like a 10% close rate, like one out of every 10 I was able to actually get to become a client. It became 75% or 80%, like eight out of 10 of these calls are actually resulting in signed proposals with deposits being paid immediately. And then they become actual projects. This was mind blowing to me, honestly, like something so simple as developing a responsive proposal and being able to confidently offer fully custom websites allowed me to charge 7,500 for a website. And then after that, I have since also charged 10K for two website projects since then. And it's just completely removed that ceiling for me. And so at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of other factors involved as well. There's, you know, of course, over the years, I got better as a designer. I got better at communicating. I gained more experience in all of these sales calls. Maybe I just got better at doing sales calls, but it really has been a night and day difference in terms of what's possible for my creative business and how useful Framer has been as a sales tool, but also as a way to deliver my service to my clients to the point where I have completely left behind Squarespace. I haven't gone back to Webflow or used Show It or Wix or any of these other services that are competing in the no code space these days. I've just gone all in on Framer and Framer has turned out to be the best thing for my business. Now, I do want to take time to thank Framer, not only for changing my whole business, but also sponsoring this video. You know, when they reached out as a sponsor, I was, you know, in the middle of this journey already. Like I I was already thinking about using it. I was already dabbling in it. I was already trying to find a way to break through that ceiling. So when they reached out, it was like, oh my God, this is perfect. Because I only want to recommend products and services that I actually would integrate into my workflow. And Framer is definitely one of those things. Like they're consistently putting out amazing updates. Every time they put out an update, it actually dramatically improves my workflow on day-to-day -day actual client projects. So like on-page editing or like design pages, light boxes, masks, like these are all things that once they came out with these new features, I immediately started using them on client projects. It's just really nice to be in a tool all the time that every month gets more and more improvements and the improvements are actually game changers for me. So yeah, I just want to encourage you guys like try Framer. It's really done incredible things for my business. And maybe I want to make another video also just explaining my journey from going from a full-time employee to taking the leap into full-time freelance. There's so much more that went into it, planning for it, um, addressing my fears and all of that stuff that I didn't talk about in this video. Just want to know maybe what you're curious about. And if you have any questions about Framer, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I would love to have a conversation with you. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Follow me at Edward Creates on all the social platforms. Um, and uh, I'll see you soon.